some of the icons that are already on the map, or rather some layers on the map, and just changing this, uh, this icon. And this is a nice icon to change because this is kind of the built-in vector style icon. You can see they disappear and reappear, and this is really good for a huge number of markers. Uh, it, it handles quite reliably. But you do have some limitations on what icons you can use because Mapbox does make it fairly complicated to add custom icons through that icon image um, property. Uh, you can do some searching on it, but basically you can't load just a custom, actual custom image through that. It has to be this thing called a sprite, a uh, sprite sheet that you have to create and then associate with your style, and then you have to call the right uh, string to refer to the right sprite, and it, it's it's a little complicated, honestly. Um, if you're quite advanced, uh, I'd, I'd advise looking that up. But otherwise, your, your custom marker icons are going to be... Um, done in almost a completely different way than anything else in Mapbox is being done, or in GLJS. <clears throat> We're actually going to create some HTML elements and uh, place those on the map as custom images. So we're going to do that. Mapbox has some pretty good examples of it here. So we're going to do a custom map icon Mapbox GLJS. It's uh, pretty straightforward. So they have a few different examples. They have a little walkthrough as well as just an example. So <clears throat> here, load up. These are just images, right? There's and they have a little click event on them as well. So they don't. You can see they don't scale, right? As you um, zoom in and out, they stay the same size, uh, and they're basically just a static HTML element. So here we can see that uh, we've added GeoJSON, da da da. And then here on each feature, we've literally looped over the GeoJSON created divs, called the markers, given them a background image, and then um, place them on the map here. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to do this exact same thing. We're going to add these same points. We're just going to copy this example quite closely here. So after the onload, we have this GeoJSON we create. Okay, great. And then we're actually just going to loop right over. So first of all, let's load it, see if we get to get that working. So we gotta zoom out. I gotta go find that image. Not sure if it will have loaded in correctly. Yes, they did. So you can see uh, it is a little different because they have some styling going on here uh, with a border radius on the marker elements. So that's why they're circles and ours they're still squares. But they are showing up and you can also see they layer over each other a particular way. You, you, can, you would have to be able to find a, a way to load them in in the right order. You can see it gives an actual width and height. So if we just change this width and height to say five pixels, and we change this one to five pixels, we're going to get much smaller uh, icons. Where are they? Okay, can barely even see them. So they're just down there. They're really small. <coughs> and. Uh, so it's really not too complicated, this type of marker thing. If you're strong at all with your HTML or CSS or just your basic web de design, this is actually remarkably similar <laughs> compared to what we've been doing. Uh, the only tricky part is adding this map box marker. So right here is where you're specifying this element you've created. And you can add any classes you want to this. You can style it in any way you like. It's also very easy then because you can add on-click events in a very natural way. You don't have to add them through the complicated way that we've uh, been that we will be dealing with some events and uh, through all the Mapbox layer specification and stuff. You pretty much just handle this right off the bat in this fashion. So if you're looking to make markers, this most of the time is going to work for you, especially because you can use any image you really want. So you know, I just recommend you know taking care of the size of your background image and ensuring that the anchor of your image is at the right place. So let's just look at that since that's such a common problem we may run into. So mapbox gl marker. We'll go to the API. Here we are. Um, in this case, when I'm talking about the anchor, I'm talking about how the center of the image is the geographic point that we actually give the marker. Okay. Whereas <clears throat> for many markers, the 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 anchor of the marker is not the center of the image, but rather the bottom, because a lot of markers are like a 
a pointed thing, and that the bottom is where the point actually is. These are just squares, so I don't think they're caring as much. But let's look at this. There is an offset. So you can see here, new marker. Obviously, we made the marker this way. We give it an HTML element, and it has options, right? Now, we didn't put in any options here, um, but you can set an offset, and that will give it a certain pixel amount to change. So if this one, if we needed to move it, we would say offset, and then we give it to it um, offset in pixels, da, da, da. why don't we click point like. So we have to give it two numbers representing X and Y coordinates. So we'll, we'll give it, um, we want it to go <coughs> not on zero, and we want it maybe to go up 10. Now this is going to be a little hard to see because these are just squares and we don't have the the base, but I just want to show you how to set that option so that if you need to mess with it or something, you can do that. Okay. So, yeah, you can't really tell that anything has happened here because they are squares. But, you know, that's you do have to set offsets uh, for certain markers. So, okay, next uh, we'll just quickly go over some of the lines and fills and polygon options, uh, but I needed to show you this little bit about markers in addition to the other type of marker that we just had done.